Welcome back to your next unit. This one is called subject and verb. Now, there are a few different types of verbs in the English language, but in particular with this unit, we'll be talking about action verbs. We'll get to the other ones as we go along further in Grammar Planet. So here's what you need to know about action verbs. An action verb is a word that expresses a mental or physical action. So physical action would be jump, walk, hike, run. A mental action could be things like worry, think, believe, love. Now, one of the things about verbs is they need to have a subject, and that's our other topic for this unit. The subject is the noun or the pronoun that is performing the action of the verb. Let's take a look at the notes. The dog in my yard barked. Now first, we're going to parse this sentence the way we always have. So, dog is a noun and yard is a noun. Which dog? The dog. Which yard? My yard. There are no pronouns. In is a preposition, in my yard, and we'll mark that with parentheses. Now, if you notice, there's only one word left, and that's barked. So then we're going to say, who or what barked? Well, your answer is your subject. And in this sentence, the answer is dog. The dog barked. Now below are the process steps, and I'll go through those in more detail in just a moment. But right next to the sentence, you'll see a completed diagram of it. And we're going to do that in this unit as well. In the last unit, you diagrammed for the first time. In that unit, you only diagrammed the prepositional phrases individually. From now on, the diagrams that you do will be for the complete sentence of whatever sentence it is that you're working on. So you will always only have one diagram for each sentence that you work on the exercises. Each sentence has a baseline. The baseline is where the subject and verb go. I always like to describe the baseline as sort of a caveman version of the sentence, as if cavemen don't like to use modifiers. So whereas we would say, the dog in my yard barked, a caveman would say, dog barked, okay? So when you do your baseline, you need to stop and read it over and make sure it's a very shortened, non-modified version of the original sentence. Beneath the baseline is where you'll hang your modifiers. Notice that they're on diagonal lines. You see, for the most part, in a sentence diagram, the important things, the jobs, the main jobs, are done on horizontal lines. The modifiers, which sort of dress up the sentence, those are hung on diagonal lines, and they're connected to the word they modify. So, for instance, the word the modifies dog, right? Which dog? The dog. So when we diagram the, it will be connected to the word dog. The prepositional phrase in my yard tells me which dog I'm talking about. It's not the dog down the street and it's not the dog on the television. It's the dog in my yard. And because that tells me which dog, I'm going to diagram that off of the word dog as well. When you add all that together, you will have a completed sentence diagram. A couple other things I want to point out about the diagram. You'll notice that there's a line between dog and barked. That line is totally vertical and it goes all the way through. You'll see part of it sticking up above and part of it hanging below the baseline. That's important. As we go on and add different things to our diagrams, little lines that hang beneath or don't or stick out or don't can indicate different things. So it's important that you do them correctly. Now, if you're a very neat person naturally, that won't be a problem. If you're not, and I'm kind of guilty, you may want to get grid paper and a straight edge to help make your diagrams a little neater. I actually find it a little more fun to diagram that way. And that way you and anybody else who's looking can actually read your diagram at another time. So let's take a look 
at our process steps. You'll notice that this block is getting larger each time that we add a new concept. So step one is what it always is. Read the sentence and make sure you understand it. You'll find the nouns and label them. Revisit each of those nouns and ask which. Label those words accordingly, articles or adjectives. Find any pronouns, if there are any. Step five is to find and label any prepositions and put parentheses around those. This is an important next step. Mentally, remove anything inside the parentheses for the rest of the process. Now the step about mentally removing anything inside those parentheses is very important. You see, prepositional phrases certainly make our sentences more interesting and give us more information. But nothing structurally important to a sentence will happen inside a prepositional phrase. The subject will never be there and the main verb will never be there. So when you go to find your baseline, the answers to the questions that are coming after on our process steps will not come from inside a prepositional phrase. So you need to ignore those words when you continue through your process. The next step is find anything that looks like a verb and mark it AV. Now, at this point, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of words left over. Then, step eight, ask who or what and say the verb. The noun or the pronoun that answers that question is the subject of your sentence. You'll draw the horizontal baseline, fill in the subject and verb, with a vertical line going through that baseline to denote the difference between the subject and verb, and hang your modifiers, articles, adjectives, and prepositional phrases below the word each of them modifies. Now look, if you've never diagrammed before and you take a look at that full sentence diagram, you might get a little wigged out. But really, if you follow these process steps slowly and carefully, step by step, you will have a complete sentence diagram with no problem whatsoever. When you work the sentences in this unit, on each sentence you will have that little diagram image to be able to pull up and compare it to whatever diagram you've done on the paper at whatever desk you're working on. Now, I wish the computer could make sure you did it, but it can't. The computer will check your parsing and make sure you're right, but you'll need to check your diagram. Make sure that you're getting that correct. And if you're not, watch the video again, look at your notes again. Really figure out what you might be missing because understanding how those diagrams work is gonna really come into play later on. One last thing, you're going to notice that it's gonna start taking you a little more time now for each unit of Grammar Planet. That's okay. There's really no reason for you to spend more than maybe 15 or 20 minutes a day doing Grammar Planet. The system knows where you left off and it will continue where you left off the next time you log in. Unless you have a huge test or something for some reason that you're trying to plow through this whole program very quickly for, it's actually better for your brain to do a little bit at a time and take some rest to sort of let it marinate up there. So don't expect that you're going to plow through these following units as quickly as you did the earlier units. You need to take more time to do the parsing now, and you need to take the time to do the diagrams. All right, that's it. On to subject and verbs for you. See you in the next unit.